Welcome to our devos. We talked about demons for two days. That's kind of crazy. Now we're going to talk about something else that's a little bit weird in Mark chapter 7, and that is the dog, or as I would like to call this, ammunition for feminists. Did you ever read in the scriptures something that you're like, that is really offensive. I can't believe God said that. I can't believe God permitted that. I can't believe God allowed this. This is one of those chapters. And I'm just going to spoil the ending for you. Jesus, the God of all creation, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who loves, calls a woman a dog. Yes. You're like, I've seen preachers kind of tiptoe and go, well, he didn't really call her a dog. It's like a, you know, kind of a euphemism. No, he called her a dog. But it's okay when we reconcile it. This is one of those passages where people are like, oh, you believe the Bible? You believe in in this religious leader that called women dogs? Is that what you believe, Pastor Sam? And I will tell you that this is a challenge. And I want to be graceful about this. But it's insulting to this woman, but it's not insulting for the reasons that you think. So let's take a look at the story. It says, in Mark chapter 7, 25 through 30, immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit. If you missed that, that's the last two days we talked about demons. It says, and she was a Syrophoenician, Syrophoenician by birth. So she was a Gentile. It's in here that she was a Syrophoenician on purpose because they were expressly and um, antagonistic towards the Jewish folks. Now, Jesus had a reputation of healing, so we have this opportunity that comes up where this woman is like, this guy's been healing. He's healing a lot of people. I heard that even Gentiles are kind of getting in on this, and maybe I could get healing for my daughter who has a demon. She's being stricken with a demon, demonized, all right? It says, now the woman was a Gentile. She begged him to cast this demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dogs. Wow, that is mean. She's like, can you heal my daughter? He's like, yeah, I can't give you breadcrumbs, dog. I can't give you the bread, dog, okay? Now, you might be tempted in your 21st century mind to be like, nah, he was just, he was just being cool with her. He's like, nah, dog, I ain't healing you. No, I don't think he said that at all. But that's what you might be tempted to think. But he, call, he says, it's wrong to put that which belongs to God's children to dogs. So we're going to look at this and we're going to understand this has bigger implications than a feminism thing. All right. She answered him. Now watch this. Yes, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, this statement you have, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found that the child was lying in bed and the demon was gone. So He has this tense exchange. It's not right to give bread to the dogs. The woman is humble and says, yeah, but even the dogs get crumbs every now and again. And he recognizes her humility and he does perform the act of delivering her daughter. Uh, without even being there, which is really cool. That's, I love that. I love that there are times in, this is a, a, a Sam thing that I'm thinking of. I love there are times in scripture when you see how powerful Jesus is. He doesn't even have to be there. He doesn't even have to be there. Like he literally can be like, yeah, she's healed, it's good. Like that just shows you that he's God. It shows you he has the power of God. Like this isn't an issue of who I got work to do. I mean, he, he's God. And there, there are so many opportunities for you to look at Mark and really see who Jesus is in terms of his divinity. It's overwhelming. But let's zero in on this dog conversation, shall we? So is this insulting? Keep this in mind, okay? And we're gonna unpackage this more tomorrow. But this is not derogatory. It's an issue of priority. It has nothing to do with women, but it has everything to do with the religious tensions at the time. So let me back this up. If you were reading this at the time that it was written, you would be tempted to be like insulted because, oh, he called a woman a dog. No, you'd be insulted for a different reason. It's because he is referring to Gentiles, Gentiles. Remember Mark says this, this is a Gentile woman, particularly antagonistic against Jewish folks. And he calls that class of people dogs. Now, this is all about the religious tension at the time. Now, I don't want to belabor this point that this has nothing to do with a woman thing, but there's a couple things that I want you to keep in mind. Jesus is the most radical when it comes to women 
of any religious leader that ever existed. He is the most empowering when it comes to women of any religious leader who existed. He is of any ancient religious leader. I'm going to talk about like somebody that just sprang up last week and started a religion. I mean, his dealings with women. He spoke to women. He spoke to Gentile women. He dealt with women that were caught in adultery. The first women who were to testify of his, the first people to testify of his resurrection were women. He had Mary and Martha. Mary is uh, at his feet and Martha is cleaning the dishes. Mary is at his feet learning and he commends her because he says that she did the right thing. Sitting at his feet meant that she was taking on the place of a disciple. That was reserved typically for men. Jesus elevated her and allowed him to hear his teaching as he was a Jewish rabbi. I'm saying all that to say this. If you're looking for opportunities to be offended about the scriptures and how the scriptures treat women, you can't look at Jesus because you're going to be wrong a hundred times out of a hundred. Jesus did more for women than any other person at that time in history. And you could see it over and over again with the way that he treated women. So I don't want to belabor that point, but I want to leave you on this point. The point is, this does have something to do with religious tension. And it's about the difference between a Jewish person and a Gentile person. And if you don't understand that, if you don't understand the difference between the way the Jews are treated with regard to God and the way the Gentiles were with the timing of Jesus, then you have missed a large part of not only the Old Testament and how it led up to Jesus, but also the radical way that Jesus did the saving of souls from both Jew and Gentile. If you miss that, or if you don't quite understand that, tomorrow you will.